Ladies and gentlemen, on the line right now is Senator John DeFrancisco. John, good morning. Thanks for, co- for coming on this morning. Thank you for having me. So, first of all, I, uh, we were talking some baseball, and you made it very clear you can play hardball. You want to talk about that? Yeah, I, uh, uh, there was a reporter who asked me uh, when I made my announcement, uh, you know, how are you going to handle this? You know Cuomo's going to play hardball. Yeah. And I basically said I was a captain of my Syracuse University baseball team many years ago, and I played some hardball, so if he wants to throw at my head, he better duck. Uh, so uh, I, I, like... I, I can play hardball, and I think he got to with Andrew Cuomo. I, uh, well, and, and first of all, I like that answer. And, well, and if Andrew Cuomo's not doing it, uh, he has one of his aides doing it. Um, they were making fun of your hairline uh, earlier in the week here. That's pretty... Uh, well, you... Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing. Everybody's had these experiences in life where you make an argument, you state your position, and, uh, and then many times people respond in a logical way. You may agree, you may disagree. But the way this administration responds, whether it's on economic development or whether it's on just a simple statement, they don't respond with a logical response because many times they don't have one. They take a personal derogatory response. Uh, to try to divert the issue, and yeah. uh, it's uh, it's sort of like uh, when you see uh, young kids say uh, something, and the person says, "Oh yeah," right, and right. Uh, it's like children, and yeah. it's uh, and that's even being unfair to children. So uh, <laughs> it's, it's, the way they, it's 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 the way they play the game, and that's part of why people are tired of what's going on in Albany. Hey, I want to ask you, um, the last time uh, anybody beat uh, a Cuomo, I guess, would go back to another upstate New Yorker. And I said that recently, and when we're talking about, of course, uh, former Governor Pataki, uh, they're like, well, listen, uh, he wasn't really upstate. Uh, You are upstate. Um, That puts you at a bit of a disadvantage. Uh, How do you handle that? Well, it's a big disadvantage as far as population and uh, and uh, obviously there's another disadvantage. There's more uh, Democrats, a lot more Democrats than Republicans. And, and uh, so it, that's, that's a disadvantage. But, uh, and he's got a lot more money. He's raised $30 million. Uh, I don't think he raised it because people love him. I think uh, it's basically uh, some money is given based upon what people have gotten from him. Yeah. So, uh, and, and so I think uh, the only thing you could really do is just point out the logic behind uh, the fact that we need a change when more people are leaving the state of New York than coming to it. We have fiscal deficits. We have a man who's not uh, governor. He's running for president in 2020. And he's in state. We're going to, I can tell that uh, the senator is on uh, what I believe is a train. I, I, I might have you back. So, you know, yeah. I got you back. Yeah, I'm, I'm here. So basically, uh, you just got to uh, sub- provide logical arguments. The other point is this. New York City residents are very dissatisfied with things going on there. The, right. the perfect example are the subways. Uh, and uh, the subways last summer was... Mm. Yeah, we're, gonna, we're going to... Yep. I, uh, so, uh, Senator, I, with uh, I, I do have to tell you that uh, your phone is cutting in and out. Are you on a train? Is that uh, is that what you is that what I'm hearing? No, no, I'm on the road. I'm heading towards Utica, and then after that, Syracuse. All right, so maybe you're uh, so you're just hitting on, a, uh, a, a a rough zone. Mm-hmm. So um, you're talking about how maybe the the conditions are right that the those in New York City not pleased with the way this governor has uh, has handled things, and and you cannot ignore all of the corruption, the trials going on, and and the uh, and and the corruption. That while it might not drag the the governor down, it's certainly connected to him. Has got to make you say, "Boy, he got to question the people he surrounds himself with." Well, the people he surrounds himself with, since he is a micromanager, do what he says and only what he says, and only will do something unless he says it. Everybody knows he's got to have his hand in everything. So for him to suggest that he knew nothing about what was going on uh, is a little bit tough to believe. Yeah, and I think the people are not foolish when they say he, when he to, to believe him and when he says he knew nothing about what his top aides and one he calls his brother was actually doing uh, uh, at a point in time, even in the governor's office. So 
uh, credibility is a big issue, and I think people uh, will see that as well. Uh, one of the things the governor has been uh, really critical of is this uh, Republican tax deal. Uh, because New York being a high-tax state, what's your take on all this? The take on it is that, number one, uh, it's a typical uh, manner in which Cuomo deals with things. He diverts attention to somebody else, blames somebody else, takes credit for everything. Uh, the subways are a perfect example. About eight months ago, the Second Avenue subway line was finally finished. He went there for a press opportunity and was preening before the cameras as if he dug the tunnel and laid the tracks. <laughs> Six months later, the subway's in terrible, terrible shape. And uh, people are going crazy with the no air conditioning, trains off the track, fires, etc. He blamed Bill de Blasio for yeah. all the problems, even though Cuomo hires the uh, MTA chairman. So, you know, it's, it's typical. But the real answer is the reason this tax code doesn't help us as much as other states is because we tax too much and we spend too much. We should be really talking about cutting costs like a family cuts costs if there's problems with the income that's coming in. So, and he didn't even mention anything about cutting costs in his budget presentation. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Andrew. Uh, so one of the things with the Republican candidates for governor is the state was talking about not wanting to have a primary. Have you spoke with Mr. Kolb or uh, Assemblyman Kolb or uh, Mr. DeFrancis or um, Giambra yet in regards to uh, your candidacy? I haven't I haven't uh, run across Giambra. We haven't crossed paths. I've crossed paths with Brian Kolb all the time. Every statement I've made before, every group has been, I will not primary. It's hard enough to win against somebody with that kind of money and uh, uh, as a upstate Republican. So I'm not going to primary if I don't get the nomination. I'm going to support whoever wins. Okay. Brian Kolb has said, Brian Kolb has said the same thing face-to-face to me. So at least as to the two of us, we're going to get together no matter what happens. What Giambra's doing, I don't know. Okay. I, I want to ask you one final question. Of course, uh, you know Utica, Rome, our area here has been uh, the recipient of quite a lot of money, upstate, uh, quite a lot of money for the first time. Uh, and it's the one thing that this governor has done that seems that previous governors have not done is pay some attention to investment upstate. How would you, uh, would you, uh, if you became governor, would you continue the quote-unquote hunger games? Or would you find a, a way to maybe go back to the way it used to be done or come up with some other way? to distribute and award money uh, upstate and throughout the state? Well, the, the point is, number one, that there has been money and promises of jobs upstate, but many of them have been unsuccessful. Right. Uh, and so in, in, my, in my community, in my district, $90 million of taxpayers' money was used in order to build a factory for a lead lighting company. The fact the company, the bu- project is built, and in fact, this is the subject matter of some of the corruption trial that's going on right now. Mm-hmm. The factory was built, the company left without penalty. Right. There was no penalty. And so uh, when they say the Regional Economic Development Councils make the decision, not true. Uh, so I would make sure that the system was such that a Regional Economic Development Council really were uh, making decisions rather than the governor picking specialty, special com- specialty companies and then negotiating yeah. a deal that doesn't protect the taxpayer. Well, we uh, we just do a terrible job of uh, of reinvesting in what we know is stable and and already here versus trying to bring in new. And then you know they're uh, they're 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 here one day and gone the next. Uh, Senator John D. Francisco, I know we're short on time. Let's do this again. I appreciate it. Anytime. Thank right. you for the opportunity. All right. Safe travels.